Welcome to another edition of RCE. I'm your host, Brock Palin, Assistant Administrator at a public university, and I have with me my good co-host, Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems and the Open MPI Project. Jeff, good thanks again. Bob. Hey, Jeff. Uh, I should point out, Jeff, uh, I'm not going to have, we're going to skip a show here. I'm going to be traveling to Terra Grid 09 for a week, and I'm not going to be able to do a recording during that time. So there's going to be a two-week pause here before we have the next show out. But we will be back okay. with another show later. Yeah. Good to know. Okay. And our show today is we have Paul Hargrove from the Berkeley Lab Checkpoint Restart Project. It's a checkpointing um, software for the Linux operating system. And maybe it runs on some other stuff, but we'll find out from him. And um, he's at Ber Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. I'll make sure I have that right. Lawrence Berkeley. So, uh, Paul, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, Paul, can you give us a real quick, I, I know BLCR works on Linux, but can you give us a quick rundown of what it is and if it runs on any platforms besides Linux? Sure. Well, the idea of BLCR, Berkeley Lab Checkpoint Restart, is to provide the ability to save the state of HPC applications and restart them again later. And it is really targeted at Linux systems, but I've heard people talk about having some sort of uh, port to uh, some SIGWIN thing that was was developed. I don't have the details on that. It's not something that we're doing directly. As far as I'm concerned, Linux is our target. Okay, so real quick, so I'm familiar with checkpointing, but normally checkpointing is built into the application itself. The application, every so many time steps or so much wall clock, it will save a state to a file. Um, is Berkeley a library that helps with that, or is it like OS-level checkpointing? BLCR is an OS-level checkpointer, and when we started this project, there were at least two major reasons why we were interested, not in replacing, but in augmenting what applications can do on their own. <laughs> and while application-level checkpoint is pretty good for handling uh, fault tolerance or the issues of how long a uh, job can run in a given queue. Uh, there are two things that the NERSC Center, the National Energy Research Supercomputing Center at Berkeley Lab, uh, were using the OS level checkpointing on their Cray system at the time, and we've tried to emulate uh, those ideas. And so the two things that were of interest there were uh, really more system administration oriented things, and that was. Uh, job migration type capabilities, being able to repack the Taurus on a Cray T3E was very important to uh, getting jobs through on that system. And the other thing was similar to that, uh, being able to manage the scheduling of the system in such a way that very long running jobs or very wide full configuration jobs were limited to a certain part of the workday, or actually not the workday, to the uh, midnight to 4 a.m. time slot. So BLCR's original sort of selling points when proposing this work to the Department of Energy was more in the scheduling area and the uh, uh, sort of job throughput uh, system utilization benefits uh, than for the fault tolerance. Now, of course, the fault tolerance is something that Checkpoint Restart uh, is, is good for, but uh, it's something that is harder to, uh, to, to do efficiently. We have the... Uh, you know, the ability to checkpoint at the OS level, uh, but we don't have any application level knowledge. So I should point out real fast that when we say checkpointing, and you mentioned in your restart, it's really the ability to restart an application from some point in time before it's done. It could be saving the state and pick up from any point. So with the OS level checkpointing, you're actually able to kind of save an application mid-run and restart it um, from that point in time without having to start from the beginning. And right, exactly. Migrate it somewhere else too, right? I mean, that's that's kind of what Paul just mentioned there, that it, it can be useful. Uh, in Cray's example, they were repacking the Taurus to get better network utilization, assumedly. But say uh, a node is about to go down or you just need to give up uh, some nodes altogether and so kind of pause your application and restart it later. But that that later might be on different nodes in your Linux cluster, for example. Are these all uh, correct examples, Paul? Yes, yes. Actually, while we were originally targeting cluster systems, 
there are a number of grid-related projects that have started using BLCR for migration. So the sort of uh, network of workstations, the uh, uh, volunteer computing grids sort of people have looked at using BLCR for migrating jobs away from machines when they go back to their normal use. So the sort of, you know, this machine is someone's desktop nine to five, but overnight runs runs someone's engineering or scientific computing job. Uh, they've looked at using BLCR for, for managing those type scenarios where they can migrate it off to another resource that might be available. All right, now, Paul, you mentioned that this is you have no application level knowledge. What, what, what do you mean by that? So this is assumedly down in the kernel somewhere. And, and um, you know, are you in, in a sense just making a big core dump file that can be restarted later? Or, you know, how, how does that work? Well, yes, um, one could think of what's in there as a core file. Uh, in fact, that's actually what we experimented originally with before we had the ability to restart things. We were uh, just dumping core files and examining with GDB to make sure we were getting the right process. Um, as I said, the application level knowledge, I guess I sort of jumped into the middle of something instead of the beginning or the end. Uh, Brock mentioned that applications typically do checkpoint, and this is often uh, using sort of a minimal representation of what the application needs. Uh, what we're doing is we're dumping the entire memory image of a process. Now, there are some optimizations we're able to make uh, for the executable and shared libraries, for instance. We're storing just the path name to that file, and we're not actually copying the contents. But everything that's in the heap, in the stack, and uh, similarly, anything that relates to an MMAP of an unlinked file, which is something often done for temporary files, uh, those are all saved in the image, and we don't have the knowledge that you know, this gigabyte of memory was uh, something that was malloced and freed and doesn't mean anything to the application anymore, but the OS still had it in, in the memory map of the, of the application. So in that sense, it is like the core dump, and it's capturing all of the, all of the memory. It's also capturing the registers, the uh, signal handler registrations, a number of other things that are stored in kernel data structures that don't exist specifically in some particular region of the application memory, something that the application may be able to query through the, uh, through the OS. But since we're doing things at the OS side of the interface, we're able to get all those things uh, a little more efficiently and a little more thorough in some ways that uh, you can't always access things. And this is one of the things that distinguishes BLCR from some of the user level checkpointing libraries that uh, we can get information, for instance, about the files that are open or the files that are mmapped uh, without needing to dive into the proc file system and without needing to do uh, tricks like interposing or wrapping parts of libc to track the open and close calls. Tricks like that are not necessary because we're working on the kernel side of things. So there's the, the trade-off between being able to uh, capture the information efficiently and accurately versus having to capture all of it without discriminating what was really essentially necessary to the application or not. Cool. So uh, since you're down in the kernel, are, are you part of, you know, Linus's kernel? Are you part of, you know, Red Hat or any other distro? Or, or how do you distribute the VLCR software? So there are a couple parts to that, that question there. Um, are we in any distros? Uh, we're working on that. Are we part of the... Uh, Linus Torvalds kernel, the answer there is definitely a no. Um, the decision going from the very beginning was that we were going to write BLCR as a kernel module and not require any patches to the kernel. Uh, that means there haven't been any patches to submit upstream for inclusion, for one thing. Uh, but that choice was made because looking at our target audience of these HPC centers, especially ones that are funded by DOE, Often you're buying from an integrator or a vendor that just won't support your system if you're patching the kernel they provide. And so by having a loadable kernel module, a given center can just not load the module at startup or unload the module after that and you know, make their service call for whatever may be wrong, and the vendor uh, you know, will still support the system. Whereas a patched, custom-compiled kernel uh, it's a matter of they would have to reboot the system back to the vendor's kernel to get support.